Hello, welcome to this very special edition of the Pace Report, reporting live here at the Brooklyn Bowl as part of the seventh annual Brooklyn Hip Hop Festival presented by Brooklyn Bodega. Tonight for the Show Improved Bowl Showcase, MC, producer, and DJ J Live tonight is going to grace the stage with other hip hop icons like the Artifacts as well as Group Camp Low. I spoke with J Live earlier about his latest album as well as Triple Threat Productions, which is his production company. We sit down and break bread about also the direction of hip hop, his take on where he stands right now, and as well as where he's getting ready to go musically. It's dedicated to Bed Star, it's representing of Brownsville, it's representing of Bushwick. It's dedicated to Fort Greene, a matter of fact, the whole Brooklyn, a better yet, the whole New York, a better yet, the whole America. It's going out to all worldwide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Welcome to Brooklyn Public, one of the hardest places to work, so please don't apply unless you really love it. Real. It's not a five, or rather eight to three, it's really five to nine. <laughs> Bitter. This is the brand new CD, and explain the concept of this. All right, well, um, it's pronounced Spitter, but it's this acronym is SPTA, and it stands for uh, said person of that ability. So the O don't count like the United States of America, but said person of that ability. Um, you know, throughout throughout my career, you know, the, the company's called Triple Threat, and part of the reason why, not the whole reason, but part of the reason why, is uh, because I'm known as a producer, DJ, and an MC. Um, so, you know, in that, in that sense, and as an independent artist, you know, I, I end up wearing a lot of hats, you know, from producer, DJ, MC, label, um, you know, I, I kind of alluded to it in a song called Practice, you know, tour van driver, uh, marketing consultant, you know what I'm saying, merchandise specialist, you know what I'm saying, so, so, just in terms of that, you know, the phrase said person of that ability, it's about, you know, having those three dimensions of, of my music sort of split you know three ways so in this in this record I'm approaching certain songs and approaching the overall album as a three-man group rather than a soloist so there's songs where you know I'm coming in and out of myself you know there's this sort of chemistry you know where we approach some of the vocals you know high some low some in between as if they were three different characters on the song you know what I'm saying and what's cool is you know last year when some of the singles started to surface we get radio feedback you know college radio feedback and uh, DJs that were, weren't familiar with my previous work would say things like, ah, you know, these guys work really well together. They remind me of, like, uh, you know, Smith & Wesson, the way the chemistry is, or Fab Five. So, you know, it definitely comes off. If you're not, if you're not familiar, you would think I was a three-man group on some songs. So, but it's, it's really, you know, speaking towards the opportunity and the responsibility of an artist such as myself you know, who was raised on a certain kind of hip hop with a certain standard and a certain quality, a certain work ethic and a certain uh, social commentary to just sort of add on, you know, so said person of that ability, if I have the ability to, uh, to teach and give social commentary and, and offer my perspective, you know, as a black man in America, as a father, as a son, as a teacher, as a student, then, you know, and I have that avenue to do so through music, that's part of my responsibility as, as said person of that ability, you know what I mean? So that's, that's sort of the grand scheme of things, but it, it, it means, you know, it goes a few different ways as far as the meaning. You know, starting off, you were going to have the whole majors put out your first project, but I think that first project segue you into doing Triple Threat. Well, yeah, well, I mean, as the story went, you know, I was on Payday London, 
um, and the first album was was all set to go, and then you know there was separation from distributor and label, and, and you know things fall apart, and it was one of the countless records that have gotten shelved over the years through label politics. But fortunately enough for me, you know the record already had legs, so people were calling it the best record you never heard. There was a sort of urban legend behind all the, the, the various bootlegs that came out before the official release finally uh, was made official in 99, um, or 2001 actually. So, you know, that, that enabled me to just sort of build off of what wasn't and then create something. You know, we put out the best part in 2001, all of the above in 2002, always will be the EP in 2003. That was my first totally self-produced project. Um, 2005, the Hereafter album. Uh, you got 07 with Reveal the Secret on BBE. And then the last full-length album, which came out in 08, which was then what happened. And it's, it's just been a really long, windy, wonderful road of, uh, you know, independent music through various labels. But the always, you know, the one constant was, you know, Triple Threat Productions. And now, you know, finally having an opportunity throughout my experiences over the years to develop Triple Threat into a full-fledged label that can, you know, put out my first, uh, this is my first fully independent, as in, you know, there's no other independent label along with it. You know, I am, you know, the label entity in this situation uh, for the first time. So, you know, it's it's, it's very exciting, very uh, stressful, obviously, time. But, uh, you know, I embrace it. And I feel like, you know, all of the setbacks and all of the advantages, all of the, you know, all the ups and downs have prepared me for this now. So... to producing and emceeing, you've had some heavyweights produce your 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 music. Jazzy Jeff, um, Diamond D, Pete Rock. How does it feel to have those guys still produce you and then you have to emcee and then flip the script and then you do the emceeing and producing your own tracks? Well, I mean, that... That is part of why, you know, I have songs like A Charm Life, because it's been a charm life. I mean, just from, from having that door open through a major and having the first album, being able to work with Prince Paul, Pete Rock, Premier, DJ Spinner, 88 Keys, and Grab Lover, and then following that up with a record where I get to work with Jazzy Jeff. And then just over the years, just, just, just countless cats that I've grown up listening to, been able to share the stage with, been able to perform with, been able to you know, feature on their songs, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it's, it's beautiful. And, you know, I, I've been, you got to understand, I, I've been DJing since I was 12 years old. So we're talking about, you know, 88. Been rhyming since around that same time. Uh, and I always had aspirations to produce, you know, learn how to use the S950 and, and you know, old Yamaha computer, um, you know, the this, just, just various, you know, the ASR10s and things of that nature. But I never really considered myself a producer until I had my own equipment. So until I got the MPC, that's when I really, you know, settled into the role as, all right, you know, I'm making beats. But I had so much time and, 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 and experience working with cats to know the difference between, okay, this is how you make beats. This is how you produce a song. This is how you execute a record. You know what I mean? So it's, it's been a great education for me. I've had, you know, it's like, you know, you go from a Padawan to a Jedi Knight to a Jedi Master, so to speak. So... Um, and I try to learn a little something from everybody that I work with, you know, and it's sort of come full circle with uh, David Kennedy actually mastered this new record and he, he mixed the best part. So it was like, I, you know, cutting my teeth with him, watching him mix 
and to hear him say, all right, you know, I'm listening to you because I mixed this record myself. So, you know, have him hear in my mix and be like, all right, well, this is, this is good. You did, you, did ex you did exactly what you needed to do. I pretty much all I have to do is touch it up a little. You know what I'm saying? That's, that means a lot, you know what I'm saying? Considering his discography, considering, you know, what I know about his ear, for him to, for him to give my ear that seal of approval is, is a beautiful thing. artist has kind of made you wear multiple hats like you said earlier how hard is it now at a time when the internet has taken off and the major labels have lost their steam to pretty much enhance your career both here in the states and abroad um i say the difficulty might lie in the fact that the level the, the playing field is a lot more level for everybody um and it gives everybody a certain sense of entitlement like you know if you can be published then you should be published um you have just a just tons of tons of artists out there a lot of talent um a lot of hard work and preparation so you know the challenge is to distinguish yourself you know where there's not just a handful of people putting out records right now there's there's you know droves of cats that are doing music you know what i'm saying like on any given night you know you might have an audience of say a thousand people and a good few hundred of them are aspiring artists themselves you know what i mean so i think uh it has its disadvantage now but the advantage it has for me is that on some level i've, I've established a certain I, I definitely have i've established my fan base but i've established a certain amount of reputation to where you know, I'm not seen as I right, just coming out. If you if you're just now hearing of me, you know, you have some catching up to do. You know, not to say that, you know, you should have heard of me before or not, but you know, there's there's a back catalog you can look to. You know, you can you can search the history and see what I've done where I've been. So, you know, in that sense it's it's advantageous for me. It's a it's a beautiful time because, you know, like you said, there's I w I'd still say there's definitely a, a gap uh, obviously financially and, and infrastructure wise and, and inroads wise between independent and major artists but you know it's it's not insurmountable you know what I mean so if, if the music stands out you will be heard if you're smart with the way that you spread it out you know you will be heard if, if you're if you're savvy enough as far as you know getting it to the people by any means necessary and by every means necessary then, then you'll be heard. And once you're heard, then the choice is theirs if they're going to accept you or reject you. And, you know, I've been accepted so far and I'm continuing to grow the base, you know, you know at home and abroad. So that's that's been a beautiful thing. That'll do it again for another edition of the Pace Report. Reporting live here at the Brooklyn Bowl here in Brooklyn, New York. It's part of the seventh annual Brooklyn Hip Hop Festival brought to you by Brooklyn Bodega. As always, I'd like to personally thank Jay Live for his time, as well as the festival promoters at Brooklyn Bodega, as well as the staff and management here at the Brooklyn Bowl. As always, please visit my website, www.thepacereport.com, for my weekly column as well as my past segments. Until next time, remember, if it's in the groove, it'll make you move. Until next time, peace.